here in Tigersville, Florida today at Dixie Crossroads. They are world renowned for their rock shrimp. We're gonna go take a look inside today. All right, let's go. seasoning. The texture is, you know, very soft like seafood, but let's just try it out and see how it tastes. And I guess uh, you can't eat the shell on this one. I usually like to eat the shell, but this is kind of too hard to eat. So we just... It's pretty good. Um, the shrimp is... Definitely has a... Yeah, actually it does taste more like lobster than like regular shrimp. It's a little bit um, meatier um, and not as I guess, soft as regular shrimp. So it has that, that special taste to it, I guess. That's what I'm holding in my hand. Something crazy. Bacon wrapped shrimp. <laughs> And it started, if you'll, usually if you want, when we're done, we can take a little walk around, you can see how big this one is. Yes. But there's a little room around the corner here, and it started with 35 seats, and then there was the bar that went right into the rest to the kitchen and you would come up and get your food and sit back down. 35 seats. We're now 419 seats. Oh wow. The restaurant has had three different additions onto it. And you can see that as you go through like, oh here's here's an addition. Oh here's another addition. Wow. You know, there's another room. That way. Well, the rock shrimp story, of course, that's the kind of interesting thing, and everybody knows that. The family that started this, the Thompsons, they, um, he was a boat builder as well, and Laura Lee, the daughter who's now the owner of the restaurant with a partner, she was one of the very first female commercial fishing captains. And so the, the dad, he was out, he was building, you know, fishing boats, and they, the fish would come in. So they own, they own the fishing boats, they get the fresh seafood, they bring it into a restaurant, they cook it, and um, one day uh, a, another captain came up to him and said, Rodney, if you want to make a million dollars, you need to figure out how to serve rock shrimp. Because it was called a trash shrimp, it was, they called it peanuts, because their shell is as hard as a lobster, so you can't peel them, you know, but they're everywhere out there, and they would, they would bring them up and they just wind up, you know, pushing them back over the sides of the boat. So when we were kids, I actually grew up with Whirly too. And we played softball together, and they had the coolest house in town. They had a pinball machine. They had horses. You know, we would always hang out there. And then Rodney would come in, and he'd have a you know big trash can of, of rock and he'd say, "We got to figure out what to do with this. We got to figure out what to do with this." So one day, Whirly said, "Well, they kind of look like lobster. What if we cook them like lobster?" So she took a pair of scissors and cut, you know, cut up their little bellies like this and put them on a cookie sheet and stuffed them in the oven. And we all kind of like stood there and watched them and their little tails curled up and the meat turned real white and boom, that was it. That's how you cook them. Wow. But then, but then had figured out how to cook them, I mean how to process them, right? So then we stopped hanging out at her house because her dad kept coming up with garbage pans full and he wanted all the kids in the kitchen, in the kitchen, we've got to cut these. Rock shrimp. So, but you gotta hear Laura Lee tell the story. It's so funny. 
but they did. What he did is he devised a machine using an old, like a, a saw blade, but he cut the blades off of it, made it really sharp, and a sewing belt, and then you take the rock shrimp and zip, 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 and that's how they, they started uh, making them to where you could commercialize and serve rock shrimp. So they were the founders of that. Then it went hog wild. I mean, everybody started. Boats coming over from Louisiana were fishing it out, and then there was a huge dip because they almost fished out the rock shrimp. Oh, wow. So then the Thompson family had to stand up on the side of conservation and say, look, we need to regulate ourselves. Um, and most of the time, the fishery community, they don't want to be told you know, what to do because it's their livelihood, but they, everybody really came together and the, the Aquilina Reef now is really managed well, which is right off the coast here. And so that's kind of the story in a nutshell. I mean, I've got more literature if you want, but they have a processing plant right over here and they have ladies that sit and, and do those rock shrimp. A lot of restaurants won't serve it because it's very labor intensive. Yeah, it's hard to feel it all. Well, and it takes the special machinery, and you know, it's just got to be handled a lot, which adds to the cost of serving something. You know, the more people you have, you know, processing it to get it to you, it adds to the cost. But it's just it's a staple of ours. People drive from all over the world. I cannot tell you if you read our little book up there, you'd see one. It's common for people to come out of Jacksonville or Tampa. Just for, it's Saturday, we're going to drive down to Dixie Crossroads and we'll make a day of it, you know, have lunch, have some rock shrimp. Oh, wow. And, uh, so that's kind of the story of rock shrimp. That's a good story. Yeah. You would, yeah.